This lecture will conclude uh, the, a three-part lecture series based on Chapter 6 of Gapinski's Healthcare Finance. In Part 1 of this lecture, I talked about uh, you know, introduced cost allocation and talked about two different methods. The first method was the direct method, and now we'll be doing the second method, which is the step-down method. Uh, so we'll be building off of the nominal uh, organization Mercy Hospital uh, and assuming now that they use step-down method. And we're going to assume uh, these cost drivers. Uh, so remember, the first thing we do, right, it's they're still going to do, even with step-down method, we're going to do the four steps um, of cost allocation. First, we identify our cost pool, which is still going to be in, in this example facility services, and general administration. So we're going to have two cost pools. Um, and uh, so the first step is to identify the cost pools. The second step is to identify the cost driver. So for facilities, we're going to continue to use the square footage as our cost driver. But for general administration, we're going to use salary dollars just to look at a slightly different angle. Um, uh, and so assuming here, you know, why, why salary dollars? Well, maybe salary dollars is a better representation of the amount of work that that general administration does. Uh, so we identify our cost pools, we identify our cost drivers. So um, now the difference between step down and direct methods is that in step down, we start to assume uh, that we want to capture some of the interrelationship between the cost centers, right? So what we say here is Mercy's manager, uh, managers conclude that facility services provides more support to general administration than the other way around, general, general administration providing support to facility services. So why, why do we assume that? Well, you know, if general administration provides, say, HR support, um, then certainly facilities services, which maybe is made up of our housekeepers and our maintenance people you know, uh, and, and some other related uh, functions, um, certainly they would use HR, but maybe uh, the relationship really flows more in the direction of facility services on a day-to-day -day basis is coming in and cleaning the general administration space, um, making sure that the HVAC system is working, you know, fixing, uh, you know, uh, squeaky doors or whatever. Um, and, and so maybe the perception is there's more support flowing from facilities to general administration than the other way around. Not to say that there isn't support flowing from general administration to facilities, right? Because if general administration is HR, then facilities employs people. And so they are using some HR service. If we wanted to capture the full relationship, we would do reciprocal, uh, uh, the reciprocal method. However, that's significantly more complicated, so we're going to do uh, just the step-down method here. So in this chapter, we only do those first two, direct and step-down. And as I said uh, earlier, uh, when I worked as a comptroller in finance in the Department of Defense uh, military health system, we used this uh, a method of cost allocation similar to, uh, or a form of step down, uh, similar to the one we're going to do here. Slightly more complicated, but but a step down method nonetheless. Um, so, moving forward, we're going to start to get into the actual. Um, uh, uh, process and the example here. So we're looking at uh, the the data for routine care, critical care, and general administration. Now, under direct, we'd only be looking at the profit centers or revenue centers, routine and critical care. We'd only be looking at those two, and we wouldn't be looking at general administration. Uh, but under step down, because we're assuming that facilities is providing support in a meaningful way to general administration, and we want to capture that fact before we allocate general administration's costs out to routine care and critical care, um, uh, we're going to include general administration's uh, square footage 
in this illustration. Now, we're not including general administration's salary dollars, even though they do have salary dollars. We're not going to include those because salary dollars are going to be used to allocate general administration. And by the time we get to that, uh, the only place that the general administration costs will go is to routine care and critical care. So we won't need general administration salary dollars because we're uh, not going to allocate general administration's cost back to general administration. That's kind of a uh, redundant. And we're not going to allocate it to housekeeping because housekeeping under the step-down method has already been, uh, the costs have already been passed down. Uh, and so there's nothing left there in housekeeping. So we're going to ignore salary data, excuse me, salary dollars for general administration. And, but we are going to pay attention to square footage because we're going to allocate a portion of the facilities uh, costs to general administration first before we allocate it to routine care and critical care. So why would we do this? Um, what we're trying to do is get a more precise cost for the provision of the general administration services. And in order to get a more precise cost, we have to include some of the overhead that is involved in providing general administration services to routine care and critical care. If it turns out that, say, routine care uses a lot more uh, general administration as it does, you know, based on the salary dollar difference here, it's almost, it's going to be roughly four to one. Um, and if there's a difference between the ratio uh, between critical care and um, routine care for facilities, which there will be, um, because uh, we have, uh, if we're doing on square footage, that's 261 to roughly 40, which is what, about a um, six and a half to one ratio uh, between routine care and critical care, right? So there's about six and a half times as much square footage in routine care as there is in critical care. Um, you know, this creates a potential for distortion if we do uh, the direct method and we ignore the fact that general administration uh, is using some of the housekeeping uh, 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 manpower or, or cost. I keep calling it housekeeping because I'm kind of marking it that way, but technically the, the slides refer to it as facilities. So um, if I slip, just kind of remember that's where I, what I really mean is facilities. Okay, so... Uh, so when we go through here, uh, we start to work with facilities and we allocate, remember facilities, total direct costs. Right? So this would be the supplies used to provide the facility services as well as the salaries and any specialized equipment that's only used by facilities and so forth is going to cost 8.6 million. But now it's going to be allocated across 315,000 square, 600 square feet right, for a cost of 27.25 per square foot. Whereas in the, in the previous example, it was allocated across uh, 300,000 square feet, which was 261 plus 39. We've increased the number of square feet that we're spreading the um, cost of, of facilities across by adding general administration. And so now we have a slightly lower uh, cost per square foot, right? So that's going to be our alloc uh, allocation rate for facilities. It's going to be based on the direct costs for facilities divided by the supported departments, which is not just the revenue uh, generating departments, but also in this case, uh, the square footage of uh, general administration. So it's a slightly lower square uh, dollar per square footage because we're spreading that cost over a, a larger denominator. Um, so from facility services, we're going to allocate at a rate of 2725, um, 2725 times 15,000 square feet. So $27.25 per square foot times 15,000 square feet gives us 408,745 that's gonna to go to, from facilities to general administration. And that's going to increase 
the general administration cost pool. So the general administration administration cost pool will now include, in addition to its 5.25 million uh, direct costs, is going to include this $408,000 overhead charge from housekeeping. So it's going to increase the cost of general administration. And then we go and do the same thing as we did under direct using the allocation rate of 2725 per square foot times 261,000 square feet for routine care and 2725 per square foot times 39,600 square feet uh, to critical care. Now note it comes up to 8.6 million, which is the direct care, excuse me, the direct cost, not direct care, direct cost uh, of providing facility services. So we have now allocated out all of uh, facility services costs, and we can basically kind of zero out facilities now. So what's left is general administration. So I said the cost pool originally under uh, is the 5.25 million in direct costs, but then there's an additional 408,000 that's coming from uh, uh, facilities. So we now have the total cost pool is the direct cost for general administration plus the plus its share of the facilities overhead. So the new cost pool is you know, almost 5.7 million. And that's going to be allocated across the 10,183,000 in salaries. And that 10,183,000 is only coming from the profit centers because the profit centers are the only um, departments left. Now, if we had more uh, support departments, it would be possible that, you know, general administration would also be stepped down into a, a, another uh, support department. So it could be like if we had a separate finance department in, in this nominal Mercy Hospital, uh, you know, you could be spreading uh, general administration further. We don't. So we'll just go with the 10.1, 10.2 million in salaries. So we now take the 5.6 million um, a cost pool divided by the $10.183 million in salaries, which is our cost driver, uh, to get 56 uh, cents of general administration cost per dollar of salary cost uh, in the supported departments. Uh, how does this differ from, from under uh, direct? Well, be, it differs because we have this 408,000 has been moved from housekeeping to general administration. So if you're a relatively higher, if one of the departments is a relatively heavier user of general administration, it's going to pay, a, it's, it's going to receive a, a larger uh, bill, step down bill, if you will, from general administration than, than under the direct method. So what winds up going to routine care is 56 cents uh, in general administration cost per dollar of routine care salaries. And then you have 8.1 uh, million in uh, salary cost from uh, or salary expense from routine care gives you $4.5 million uh, dollars in in general administration cost allocated to routine care. And likewise for critical care, you have 56 cents in general administration cost per dollar of uh, salary cost times $2.035 million in salaries in critical care. And so we get uh, 5.658, right, which adds up to the total cost pool um, for uh, uh, for the for general administration. Okay, so we've now allocated uh, our overhead in a slightly different way. Right, we've, we're using it uh, using the step down method, and so we still have the same amount of revenues for routine care, the same amount of direct costs for routine care. The indirect costs, however, are slightly different, um, and actually it winds up favoring routine care a little bit uh, and reduces uh, the, the bill, uh, the, the indirect or overhead costs allocated to routine care. 
Uh, so routine care actually has a, a um, slightly better outcome uh, in terms of profit. So, uh, uh, so unfortunately for um, the manager of critical care, it appears uh, because they use um, more uh, uh, general administration, right? They wind up uh, pulling down uh, a, a larger portion of the, uh, or a larger uh, general administration bill. So here you can see the the differences. So direct method, the overhead bill to routine was 11.7. Under step down, it's 11.6. So there, um, the amount of overhead is reduced by 104,000 uh, on routine care, and it basically winds up moving down to critical care. So the poor critical care manager who is already losing money uh, is doing even worse under this other uh, option. So if you were the CEO of Mercy, what would you conclude from the consistency of the two results between the direct and step-down methods? Um, you know, it depends. Uh, it depends on how you want to, to think about it. I would suggest that it's probably more accurate um, uh, to use the step-down method. Um, and so you know, the, the question is, are these good measures, right? Uh, it's kind of, I, I go back here to um, the issue of the choice of uh, driver. It really seems that uh, uh, in both cases, the choice of driver that we've done, um, it really kind of limits the ability of the departmental manager to impact uh, the the overhead that they're getting stepped down. And I would say this is one of the frustrations of managers when they get a step down bill is, you know, there's nothing we can really do about that. I don't, you know, don't control any of these things um, in the administrative departments. Um, and I don't control the drivers you're using to push that stuff down to me. So I'm just kind of a passive recipient. Uh, if we're going to hold our managers responsible for uh, uh, for their P and L, right? So for their outcomes, um, you have to give them the ability to affect it. Otherwise, uh, they're just you know, if you happen to be have gotten the job as the routine care manager, then you know life is good. And if you happen to have gotten the job as the critical care manager, uh, life is less good. Uh, particularly if your your you know pay is maybe your annual bonus is tied to your profit. Um, you know that that would be kind of unfair to the to the individual managers, and certainly, you know, the critical care manager would be somewhat frustrated and would want to leave, um, and maybe take the routine care uh, 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 manager's job when the opportunity arose. So you have to be careful about what you choose um, as a as a um, uh, a mechanism for allocating cost because it does have an impact on the motivation of the people. Uh, who uh, are working in the departments where you are pushing costs down to. Okay, so this, this concludes uh, our discussion of Gapinski's Chapter 6, uh, Departmental Costing and Cost Allocation. Um, and, uh, uh, well, I, I guess that depends on, you know, as to whether you're responsible for all the text or not, uh, the material and text or not depends on your professor. Um, so good luck and uh, hope you found this useful.